God.
place of unity with Jesus. When we worship, we are telling him thank you, thank you, thank you. When we worship him, we are letting him know how amazing he is and all the great things that he's done for us that we are grateful for. So tonight, as we're singing, all creation cries, you are holy. The angels are in heaven telling him how holy he is. And if we join with the sounds of heaven tonight, how many great things can happen in this room. If we can just listen. So let's just stay here for a minute. And let's sing to him at his feet. In an intimate place with him in a secret place. Because he is holy for us. God, you 
said that you're coming back for a bride, but it's a pure bride. So God, I pray that in every area of our lives, we would expose ourselves to the purity of who you are, to the purity of who Jesus is, so that whenever the breath, whenever the groom comes back for the bride, whenever Jesus comes back for his church, that God, I pray that we would be, we would be seen pure in his sight because we have exposed ourselves fully to who he is. God, we thank you for everything that you're doing in this room and our hearts. God, I pray that right now every distraction in the room is removed and that we would be so focused on what is being said tonight, straight to our heart, straight to our spirits. God, we love you. We give you all the praise and the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we have Mr. Dale Williams. He's going to be sharing your word with us tonight. I'm really excited because we go way, way back story for a different day because it's very long. Um, but I'm really excited and I just want to thank you for everything. I want to start off by saying thank you for everything that you do for this ministry. I want you to know that it is not done in vain and it is not um, hidden or anything like that. And I know you do so much and you don't get enough credit for what you do. Um, but the Father sees it and he's smiling down at you every single time that you do something for someone. Um, and you never want um, recognition or credit for those things and that is so pure and so holy. Um, so thank you so much. You have a servant's heart and we thank you for that. Um, he's done absolutely everything for us imaginable. Um, everything to cutting our grass to helping do our systems. He travels with us all the time. It doesn't matter where it is, when it is. Um, and he just helps us so much. So thank you, Mr. Dale. But yeah, I trust you.
first call. Let's read this. Jeremiah chapter 4. The Lord gave you this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Amen. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. We, we read that. We heard that. We heard it preached. Right? Amen. I mean, come on, be real. I, I want some honest answers tonight. We all heard that, correct? Amen. And everybody stops right there. Now, I ain't got to an answer it. I never heard a preacher go past this point. Everybody wants to quote that. I knew you, it was just true. But we want to go a little deeper. Next verse. O sovereign Lord, I mean from the NLT version. O sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you, I'm too young. He's just a child. He's 19 years old. I, I, I researched it. 19, 20, give or take. He admit I'm a child. Okay. Verse 7. The Lord replied, Don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say wherever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. The angel of the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put words in your mouth. Today I have appointed you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Then the Lord said to me, Look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I am watching. And I will certainly carry out all my plans. Then the Lord spoke to me again and said, ask, what do you see now? And I replied, I see a pot of boiling water spilling from the north. Yes, the Lord said, for terror from the north will fall out on the people of this land. Listen, I am calling the armies of the kingdoms of the north to come to Jerusalem. I, the Lord, have spoken. They will set their thrones at the gates of the city. They will attack its walls and all the other towns of Judea. I will pronounce judgment on my people for all their evil. For deserting me, and for burning incense to other gods. Yes, they worship idols made with their own hands. Get up, prepare for action. Go out and tell them everything I tell you to say. Don't be afraid of them, or I will make you look foolish in front of them. For see, today I have made you strong like a fortified city that cannot be captured, like an iron pillar of red bronze wall. You will stand against the whole land, the kings, officials, priests, and people of Judea. They will fight you, but they will fail. For I am with, with you, and I will take care of you. I, the Lord, has spoken. We don't ever, we don't ever hear that, do we? Yeah. I never heard that. I never read that. He's 20 years old. God, God called him, and he heard God's voice. Amen? Yeah. The young people. The young people. There's something else I'm going to get into, and I'm going to share that I heard nobody else talk about in all the years I've been in ministry. Listen. You know, we're going to get down in there. But Jeremiah had a call from God. And every one of us has a call from God. God knew us before we was formed. Every one of us has a purpose. Every one of these little babies, every one of these young adults has a purpose. Us old guys, it's time to step aside. We're still valuable, but the new generation's coming in. And we have to be, be ready. Now, let's go to 1 Samuel. Let me get the scripture.
First Samuel chapter three. Chapter 1 Samuel to find out the history of that. See, 
Eli, God has said he's going to kill Eli and his whole household. Okay? And God was raising up Samuel to fulfill what Eli dropped the ball on. And Eli's son of a priest, grown the dust. Well, they was doing things, they was going back and taking them, burnt offers before they had a chance to offer them and taking the meat and the fat and so forth so on. God did not like it. So God sent a prophet in the last chapter to Eli tell him, I'm taking you out and your family and everybody had anything to do with them sacrificing, I'm taking them out. And the ones who did not have to do will stay and be alive. So that's where we are right now to get you up to date. So Samuel is living with Eli. Or well, Eli was Samuel, they want to call it. And the Lord said to Samuel, I'm a, okay, excuse me, back up. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant listen. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I have warned him that judgment has come upon his family forever. Because his sons are blaspheming God, and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will be never forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. Thank God for the blood is all I got to say, brother. Thank God for the blood. Because it was today, we be a messed up bunch. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. And see what's so what's disturbing. This is church people. This is pastors or preachers or, you know, church kids and what so that want to be in the house of the Lord. Claim to be, you know, who they are. And they're doing wrong. Thank God I said, thank God for the blood. And goes back, I won't go there. I have warned him judgment come upon his family forever because his sons are blasting God. He has disciplined them. They grown men. But Eli still has say so because they're in his house. So I have vowed that the sin Eli and son never be forgetting by the sacrifice office. Verse 15. Samuel stayed in bed till morning and then got up and opened the door of the tabernacle as usual. Now, Eli don't know what, at this point, what God told Samuel. Okay? He don't know if he's found out. He was afraid to tell Eli what the Lord had said to him. I reckon I would be too. And here I am, what, 12 years old, 13 years old, and a man who's probably way up in age, a priest, high priest, and you're going to go up there, 13 year old boy? Yeah, I'll be scared too. But Eli called him son. Here I am, Samuel Light. What did the Lord say to you? Now listen to this part. Tell me everything that made God strike you and even kill you if you hide anything from me. Talk about stop all lying. Want the truth, then. Man, want the truth. And I'll just throw this out. Maybe some of us today take the truth and, and not let the kids lie to others. We might have a better generation come up. And we ain't got to say amen. I know for a fact. And don't hold in the bag. Well, oh, here we And may God strike me to kill you if I had in front of me. So Eli told, so excuse me, so Samuel told Eli, he didn't hold anything back. It's the Lord's will, Eli replied. Let him do what he thinks best. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and everything Samuel said proved to be reliable. And all Israel, from Dan in the north of Bathsheba in the south, knew that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear as Shiloh and gave a message to Samuel the time now. We had two young adults, one 13, one around 19, 20. 
1920-year-old Jeremiah had a good lineage. Samuel was so like grafted in, but yet Eli failed in many areas, even though he was a high priest, he failed in many areas to raise up the young man. From the, from, from this, this gentleman here, he, he, he's, he's doing the right thing. He's keeping his children in church, keeping them in the Word of God. You don't see that. How many times we see how you turn the news on? There's a killer, there's a killer, there's a killer. The kids out there, the teenagers, 11, 12 year old, out in the streets with the guard. After midnight, 3 o'clock in the morning, running the highways. What's happening? Somebody dropped the ball. The parents, the parents. It all started. That young lady, Rector, that's my granddaughter. Rector, stand up, please. You all know her. Let me tell you about her. She lived with us. The day she was born, she'd been in church. Still in church, still in the same church. Age of eight, she received. God, she age accountability. She knew. See, God go by accountability. What you know, where you, then you gotta make a conscious decision. Do you want to serve God? You know, give your life to Christ. AJ, she did, and then got filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. AJ, still there. She got a license here, wait for last in her church. God got to call her life. We kept her in church. My wife her all the time, and I get to a little bit. Uh, talk, Bible, pray with her, kept her in church. See, she raised the church. Okay? These, these, these brothers and sisters here, God birthed them in church. There's a call on their life. <clears throat> the young man I tell you got a call on his life. He, he's he kind of work. They, they keep them there. We have to keep our young people in church. We have to. And I'm telling you from the natural, okay? You think from the natural. But I'm going to show you scripture. We're going to go to scripture in the New Testament. Because it's in the Old Testament, it's in Job, and also it's in Acts, about God tells us what we're supposed to be doing. But ain't nobody preached that one either, because I haven't heard it. And uh, first I want to go to Book of Job. Job chapter 2, verse 28. But everything I'm telling you, I want to be able to back it up. sons and daughters will prophesy, the old men dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. Okay? Then that's also in the New Testament also.
verse 4. Here's what I want to get to. This is Old Testament. It's also a New Testament. We'll go right here. NLT version. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. Has anybody heard that ever been taught? Don said, no. He's been this a lot around a long time. I haven't either. I haven't either. Back when Miss Faith asked me to do this, and I'm like praying about this, praying about this, and God's saying, God laid on the heart. Three, about a month ago, it was Sandy Chapel, which is over here in East Burn, East Burn, East Brim. We go there a lot, John Skinner's church. And, uh, I spoke two words to me, different times. There's a storm coming. He told me there's a storm coming. The likes that no man's ever seen. And you can believe me or not, okay? I don't go around making all these accusations. But God said there's a storm coming. Gather my children. Gather my children. And I'm like, gather your children, Lord. In God's eyes, what is his children? Get out of my children because there's a storm like you ain't never seen come. Then I got to pray and I got to pray, Lord, what about this? What about this? And he said, You got to tell your generation, you have what he said wrong with today. In the natural, kids are not taught the most important thing, and that's God. Amen. But what they are taught is how to go down to McDonald's. I bet they ain't taught, I bet the man, the father, and the wife don't take my look at the moon, look at the stars. Or they tell them about the trees. We teach them some natural things. But we don't teach them about God. We don't, we just send them to school, let them come home, let them go. God commanded us. Let the next generation know about what we so things that God has showed us, we've done in our lives. We need to be passing on. Yeah. Not that we boast in ourselves, but we need to pass that on to stir them up. Amen. We need to have them in church. We need to show them like Samuel and then Jeremiah. Was, was raised up in the Lord. We need to show them and teach them God's ways and encourage them. And they got questions, be there. And let them know what we see. Let them know the things that we, God has showed us. Amen. See, it's, I, he got all of mine. It, it's like, this is about a month ago. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I mean, you know, uh, fell short myself, you know, but, uh, hey, look, I, I know y'all want to shout. This ain't a shouting message right here. This is some real stuff. And we're kind of, we held accountable. We have even, you, you see what happened in the Old Testament, even when the grown priest's sons was misbehaving because the head priest had I can say so. The kids missed it. Wrong adults missed it. Hey. But God wants us to teach our children. We teach them how to open the book. We teach them how to potty train themselves. Right? Am I, am I right? Adam, am I right? Yeah? I mean, yeah. yeah you know, we, 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 we teach them how to get dressed, how to hold a spoon, how to fart. Uh, take, go from a sippy cup to a cup, all the natural thing. But we sure fall short getting them in the Word of God. Come on. We're falling short. That's right. Okay? Hey, you see what God's Word says? Teach them. Teach them what, what, you know, what's coming up. Teach them. Share with them. And it's not just reading the Word. Okay, that's that's the start. That's the start. But anything that you see, any 
visions that you've seen. You share with them. You share what God was saying. Uh, I'm going to share something with you tonight. Tonight, I very rarely talked about this. 50 years ago, this, this, this summer, happened 50 years ago. God finally gave me the release and to talk about it. And I always ask for 50 years, Lord, why did it happen to me? Why? Why did this happen to me? And he gave me one answer here for a long three or four weeks ago. He said, tell them about it. Tell them about it. And tell them it can happen in the blink of an eye. And I said, yes, Lord. Because I have 50 years, I want to know why. And, uh, and I want to tell you a little bit about the things I've seen in my story as a teenager. You know, I'll tell you, I'll back up. God loves us so much. You see in Jeremiah, God said, I knew you before you was born, you know his mother's womb. God wants us to be blessed. He wants us to see us happy. He wants us to smile at him. As a teenager, my family down there started going to Colorado in 1967. On the men would go hunt, drive out there, put their hands, and start hunting. Well, I was a kid. And I got fascinated when I go to Colorado. I get to ask myself, I want to drive, I want to go see all the countryside. I like to go there, I like to just talk. I ain't no God. Let me tell you about that, too. My daddy was a Methodist when he, when he went to church. And, you know, they dogged him out, okay? Here's the problem. My mom was your old witness. That was a tough household. And that was like, we didn't talk about it. We ain't going. But mom would sneak me off to the meetings and things. I'm like, as a kid, you what are you going to do? So I was just like, I know, no, no. They had they, they, they different opinions of that. So God gave me just to let everything I thought about my whole one He let me go. He let me give me. I had a chance to, I've traveled all of North America, down in Mexico, all, all of Alaska, no, Alaska, two trips, and all of Canada. Acting, I got out of high school in seventh grade. I had a car wreck. A drunk hit me. Now, let me, let me throw this disclaimer out. There's not a devil in every door knob, okay? But don't. I know what the Bible said, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, okay? You get a flat tire, I think the devil, just the tire went flat. You got a door that's stuck, right? the door is stuck, the light is, okay? You see what I'm saying? Things just happen. And yeah, that's all I'm saying. The guy got drunk, and the well, town ball on text down there, got drunk, we had a fight, hit the street, lost control, hit me. Hit on. Mm -hmm. I just come up right out 33 miles. Hit this car, my, my car, my dad's car, and towed the car out and cut me all up here. And the first time I ever wore a seatbelt. Well, why? The, the Dodge Star. And that car came, I seen that GTO coming across it. And hit me that door came right there. Knocked me back from here. You know, road out there, I'll hear that walkway. We come in, right across the street from the hospital. And uh, I went that way. The time that car got hit, to the time it stopped, that far it went. And two grown men could get to the passenger side, and I'm fixing to tell you, took place. Now, I knew it was God, but I didn't have a relationship with him. Did not. I knew I didn't knew the one. No relation, no one. I felt that impact that I left my body. And I went through that white tunnel light. And it was moving. I was moving. And I really didn't feel no peak. I mean, it didn't feel no pain. I got up there and opened up a big old room and just and was fog about that high. And people in a white rain, just, just groups of them. There's a big area, I don't see this is nothing, a room or something, you couldn't see behind. They just, people there, I'm just so peaceful, so peaceful, just, 
I felt so relaxed. And I looked, I said, oh, it's my great grandmother. My daddy's side family. I remember her because I was like 10 years old when she died. And she says, it's not your time to go back. I said, oh, I ain't going back. I don't want to go back. No, no. She said, you got to. You can't stay. I don't want to go back. We well, ain't got no choice in the matter, okay? And that was a win. And then I, I come to him, couldn't get the door open, because it was all caved in. I was just panicking then. And I reached for the other door, I couldn't reach it. I really panicked then. It was like seat belts. So first time I wore a lap belt, first time. I'm all busted up up here. And I hope when any guys help me up, take me to the hospital. I go home, but I had to go back next day to put me in. I, they thought I was busted up here. This flame was just bruised. I didn't say nothing to nobody. And I'm like, ain't nobody gonna believe this boy. I think I'm making this up. I ain't saying a word. In many years before I said anything about it. And I'm like, why did that happen to me? Why did that happen to me? What did I do? So I just kept quiet, you know. And I, I, I was cool with that. You know, I heard people talk about time, it's cool. And don't know why, don't know why God let me go up there. And uh, went to a mountain. And the other day, I was going to say, two minutes ago, God said, just that quick, just that quick, I want to show you, just that quick, that happened. You need to tell people the time in the blank of eye in the blank line, I, I, I can't snap my fingers. If I could, I would. In the blank line, either you're here or you're gone. In the blank line, I just went to a funeral last Saturday. My brother down in Louisiana, my older brother died of basic cancer. You know, and uh, he had, my baby got a self right with the man, and God back in December. But you know, he's suffering a long time. He's gone. I'm glad he's gone. I really am. My older brother. I'm getting all better and got messed up that age and stuff. I'm glad he ain't suffering more. You know? And uh, I got to preach you anyway. So, God said in the blink of an eye. Now think about that. Think about that. You know, I don't want to miss the microphone. I had to drop this mic and this would be over with. Just think about it in the blink of an eye. We've got enough issues already. That may be an awkward error while I go tell you. I may have to blame that one. We'll, we'll figure that one out later. Uh, could have been me. But in the blink of an eye. Boom. We see it every day. We see something happen. Turn that light off. In the blink of an eye. God said, I said, thank you all. Thank you. After 50 years, I had a chance to. You revealed, you took me somewhere that people even, I want to hear a lot of you So I didn't say it for many years. The next time I had a, 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 a vision, I'm down there in Texas, and I'm, I just got in, I work for three and 11 shit, shit work, just got out of school, and I'm laying down in my bed. Two o'clock in the morning, my sister calls me. Now, the old house I had, you set up in the pool strain right there in the middle of the room. Y'all got something in, don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what you just mm -hmm. push around. And she's two years younger than me. And growing up, we like, like little sister lady, you know, she's straight A's. Straight A's, all the way from elementary to kindergarten, all the way to college, straight A's. And I don't think she ever missed a day in school except for one day. She cried because she had good classes. Straight A. I always ask them, how come you can't make A's? I said, just wait till you get to 10th grade. Well, that time I got 12th grade to ride grades. <laughs> you know, I, had, I, I had no excuses. She was smart. And she got a Corey. I heard her voice. Once I got out of school, she got out of school. We kind of like met out. We got, you know, we were hanging around a lot. She called my name. Just like I'm talking to y'all right now from a dead sleep, I wake up and I turn the light on. And like the doorways, I'm like, I got the cover right here, not knowing what that's gonna do. You know, I'm like, I'm looking around. Ain't nobody there. And I was, I was kind of like, 
Okay, I was eight back now, so I left. About two hours later, I heard my phone rings. My mom was called, she lived across town. She said, uh, they just come to the house, they had a car accident. I said, be right over there. And they said she died at two o'clock. Well, I looked at my clock. I'm like, I didn't say nothing about that one either. I'm like, I keep them quiet. They go like, I'm crazy. My mom, I'm like, she really like this, because, you know, they don't believe stuff like that. And I kept that ring news. She comes to me, my sister comes to me. God let me have that. You call it what you want, you know what I mean? I, I, I just, I, I, she come to me. And they spoke to me for whatever reason. So through the years, God has given me opportunities to see things in, in glory clouds, in visions, in things of this nature. I don't know why I do that. But the scripture says, I will have old men dream dreams, and young people will prophesy and see visions. God promises us that. How many times, how many times these young people, God is trying to get their attention like he did with Samuel and Jeremiah, and how many times they're not trained up to hear the word of God? How many times? What if we train them up? I know that one is. She ain't give me no trouble at all, then she don't drive. <laughs> but that's a good thing. She, she had a situation one time, she, her mom was visiting her, and uh, back many, many years ago, and her mom woke up, had a bad dream, and it turned on her, they said, I said, it took in the name of Jesus, get out of here. And uh, her mom looked at her. Don't you think you need to get your nap? No, I took care of her. I'm back to sleep. You know what I mean? It's kind of comical. My daughter didn't think it was comical. She was freaking out, you know. <laughs> but uh, train them up. God commands us. We need to train them. Tell them. Tell them about the things. Like, let us share with y'all. God says, share that with y'all. And every one of them, every one of us going to Mac, you got something somewhere inside of you. You got something that you probably train him. And as supposed some mentors, you can be a mentor to people. Somebody somewhere needs some of us to mentor, to share that. Well, not that we're boasting what we did. God got me on that one back in the 90s. Sure did. Uh, I was following Kim Hayden Ministries. We were going to be out from the Iraqi camp, more or less. And we were definitely out there to do Mexico missions. And we were getting to go around to a lot of the churches, Pastor Sam's church. And uh, we get to minister. And I got excited, just suddenly, young, young, young. And I said, man, we had a good time. I said, oh, y'all should have been this last night. We were at this church. And I missed this and this, you know. And I think I put that eye sent in there. And I'm like, this didn't feel good. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. See, don't ever take the glory of God. That's a no-no. But, but I didn't mean to do it. I just said, well, I was doing this one. And I was like, okay. The Lord kind of slowed me down a little bit. Hey, you don't get no glory, buddy. It's all mine. So now, so nowadays, they, um, I'd be behind the scenes. I ain't doing nothing. It ain't me up here right now either. They don't look at me. God's doing all this. God got this for right now. I'm just doing a well, a well investment. But I do know one thing. Best kids got a hunger that needs a direction to go and be ministered to. They got to know about who God is. We have to share the things that God has done in our lives. Friends of ours, Gary Williams, Gary Peggy Williams, the missionaries, but some of y'all know Peggy, and maybe Mike Wright, on Gary down in Mexico, and Gary went to church with me, on church with him, brother. And he was going to pay a city lot to do some stuff over yonder. 
and I work out of Birmingham. So Gary ministered one night, I drove over there, and I stood the pan on the yard in the truck. And he was at this little church, and he was praying for these people. And I was, I was helping him, you know, catch or whatever you call it. And he prayed for this 10 year old girl. And he laid on the floor. God laid on the floor. And he said, Get down there, put your hands on them, and pray for them. So I got out and closed my eyes, and I got I lost. My eyes were closed, and there was, I couldn't see them. In the, everything was a fog. She was covered in a fog. And God said, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. That's me. And I'm like, open my eyes. And I closed my eyes. Lord, let me see. Let me see. And that fog stayed a little while. It kind of lifted. Well, you know, I can only imagine what Moses did. When he walked through, God just walked by him. You know, I can imagine. Because when I left that Bell City and I drove my car back over to Bessemer, I didn't feel more pain for three days. I, I was in a fog. Went to Clarksville, Tennessee, and I don't remember half the trip. For three days, I was, I was totally just out, out of it. I remember that, just like it just happened. How many of us has experienced things from God that we just suppressed? Well, not good things that we need to be sharing with people. God called us for such a time as this. He called these young people to have a mentor. To, we need to tell them about what God's doing in our lives. God does some mighty things. But there's a storm coming, people. Some of you may not think it all, okay. But there's a storm coming. And we got to get ready. We got to get these children ready. Because I, I'm not going to say, I'm like, I'm like Faith of the She ain't made no prophecy, and I ain't either. I'm just, uh, we're close to the words yesterday. Well, I'm just saying that. We're close to the words yesterday, and tomorrow we'll be even closer. And we better get our house in order, and we better get God's house in order, and then we better love our neighbor to help the neighbor get his house in order if they ask us and do what God has called to do. Mac, we made a mission trip down there, I think. Are you going, are you going to this next one? Yes. He, he's actually called it out, mission field. Bless him, buddy. That's a hard, that's a hard task. Hard task. And uh, I'm sure they'll talk with you. I wouldn't you know, talk to about it. But each one has a call on our life, and God's calling us to do something. Each one of us. And some of us are not going to do that. Some of them, how? Okay, Lord. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. Huh? You didn't, did you? You hear me now? Yeah. It's kind of way wrong with God. It's the way Samuel was. You calling me? You calling me? Who's that? Who calling me? If we're tuned into God's voice, if we walk, He walks with us, and we walk with Him, and we meditate with Him, and we have a daily walk with Him, He can just tap us. Yes, Lord, what is it? He don't have to holler. But I've been in that place the way it's the hard. You know, counting that one accident, I've been in three accidents where people lost their lives. That was the first one. The two more were here in Alabama, seven years apart. A woman coming from Memphis, going to Atlanta with, with some nieces and nephews in her car. I hear her back down the way, putting that retainer wall up in 20. I think 2007, I think it was, 2009. And uh, we just come out of construction. I was in a little tank wagon. It had to be in the left lane. I was moving one of the trucks at. And 
before I can get over, you know, that makes some traffic get clear. I look across the uh, being in an interstate of the 92 mile park. And I look at that road and there's this car coming. I looked over it, she straightened the curve out. Then a mile of the rent, a mile of the she ran from Enterprise, I think. She hit that medium at a hundred mile an hour. And I got on them brakes, I, I was empty. And I looked, there's three kids in that car. And I seen that boy, I still see that boy that I looked at me. And I said, Jesus help me. And uh, I, I mean, I was trying to get this truck stopped. And I said, I'm going to miss her. And unfortunately, I didn't get my right in front of the headlight of the truck, caught the right in front of that headlight of her car, and I opened my whole side of the car, but she went by that way. And she ripped that steer axle back and beat that, that truck went that way. I didn't get hurt. That young boy lost his life. You know, like am I. You know, we was supposed to take a mission trip. My wife and I was supposed to go on a mission trip in about four more days. And uh, I got out of the truck and I'm back here, you know, the people. You know, I'm just calling 911, you know, I had a couple of phone calls, I made that, I'll have any phone calls, you know. And when you do a commercial vehicle, you have a lot of red tape. First thing they do, they take you to the hospital, you get a drug test right off the bat. CDL license driver will get a drug test, alcohol, a whole nine yards. And they're watching you. The cops watching you, the technicians watching you, give that test, uh, then you gotta get your all your law books, paperwork, so forth so on. And it's this I was like where I, I was legal, everything I did. And I asked the troopers, I had to go out of town, I had to give them a report, he said, get me when you get back. You know, the station here at Tuscaloosa. So I went to Mexico. And uh Thank God I had good, good backing Christian family. I got past that. God is my counsel. I didn't have to go to professional. God took care of me. I give this to God. I said, God, I can, you got to deal with me. You know, uh, I wasn't emotionally upset because I done everything right. I was, I was done everything human possible with myself. There was no wrong anything with my actions. Okay? I thought that was another. 2013 happened again. This time, same trailer. I was loaded, going into Birmingham. Just past 459, you're going there at the best one. You got that one overpass and no ramps at it. Y'all remember that one? Well, two o'clock out, there was a rainstorm, and they shown a lady coming this way. And that medium just about as wide as right here. Just about that wide. It's just how wide it is. And that young lady's not paying attention. She bumps her back into the car. I think that bridge. Yeah. She come across that. At me and I'm like, oh no, not again. And uh, she sideways, gets that left front part of that truck. And I'm running about 50 mile an hour. And I hit that car, or the truck hit the car, shot it off, back across that, and broke that car in half in front of the rear. Then I went that way. That concrete pillow sitting right there. And I got molten sulfur on, which will flame up if it catches fire. Plus it's 300 degrees. And I said, Jesus, you go to heaven. And I went, he said, turn that wheel. And that wheel didn't go flat. And I was able to turn it. And later on, we got truck yard and they just towed it. And it was towed out like that. It was towed out like that. And I turned and kept from getting hit. They ripped everything off there. And it rained. I got out, walked back, maybe from here to that, length of this grass over there, and two guys. You get the rest of the story. A blanket bag on the road there. And that young man there. And uh, they just kind of nodded. I said, Lord, not again. I, I was, I was late. At the truck driver, you have to, that's something you have to make sure, you know, it's, it's bad enough. Both times, God took care of me. I was in his arms. Emotionally, I was, you know, my life, you need help, nothing, you need help. I got God, I got God. 
That's all I need. That's all I need. I need God. I got him. So I know what tragedies was like. You know? When my sister died, from me dying. Not that hard of them. Them two there. And I was an 18 year old girl, unfortunately. She made a mistake. In the point of an eye. Now, I, I say that to say things happen in a blank of an eye. Are you ready? Are your children ready? And I, you need to know these things. What are we doing to help the next generation? What are we doing? That they're depending on us. God's word said they're depending on us. They got nobody else. Sure, God's all God. He's a spirit. But he has to work through people. He has to have somebody. He has to have more contact. He has to have somebody that will be a servant. Free. God never forced himself on you. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's a gentleman. Holy Spirit never will. It's free reign. It's freedom of choice. That's all it is. Freedom of choice. And God said the children. Get the children. Teach them. Teach them. Heard the scriptures. Are you teaching the children about God? That's the question. Are you raising your children and telling them the things of God and showing them everything that you experienced? Be, be, be selective, you know, things that like I, I omit all the de fine details, you know. Uh, tell them about God. Tell them about the Spirit God. And, uh, you know, I God here tonight. God's here tonight. I feel him strong. I haven't felt that way in a long time. Uh, it, was, it was awesome. Praise the service. Worship service was awesome. Last night, and, and Mary was awesome. I was hoping Faith would sing a song she sung last night. She sung two last night. Praise and Grace and that other one. Remember the song? What's the name of the song? Huh? Yeah, yeah. That how great they are, that young lady. Got a gift from God of her. It's like angels singing. And when she was singing that last night, I mean, my hair was just standing up and like this God moved, just moved back in there. God was here tonight. He's always with us. So that being said, that, uh, that's what I have. That's what I have. I want to share it with you.
that we should be trained in the ways of the Lord. And I'm so grateful that you gave me parents that did that for me. But God, I was trained to understand that loving you is what matters the most and that no one else can ever love me the way that you can. And that God, whenever you placed a calling on my life, they supported me. So Father, I just pray that everyone in this room would take that would take that and just run with it and understand that if there's young people in their life to train them up to understand that when a calling is placed on their life it is to be held with honor but the Lord has done so many great things and he's continuing to do that through, through us, through his children
just take a moment to reflect on the word tonight. I want us to think about something that Lord was ministering to my heart. That's the devil speaking tonight. There was something powerful that happened here tonight. Can you imagine a word that God has held for 50 years for you tonight? Think about it. Something that God's not allowed him to speak for 50 years. And I begin to put things together. I begin to put together the, uh, the puzzle, if you will. And I, and I thought about that and I thought, you know, there was a moment, there was a time that was right for God to speak to Jeremiah when he spoke to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah wouldn't do anything. He, 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 he didn't go in there and lay down in his bed and say, God's going to speak to me tonight. God's going to change my life tonight. God's going to do something in me. God's going to change something in me. I'm going to be a different person. That's not what happened. You see, he was just there at the moment when God said it's time to speak. We read, we read about those moments when God spoke. There, there was the, the Apostle Paul had an encounter with Jesus. It was just a time that that moment in time that was right. He came down and he said, listen to me, Paul. You need something in your life. I want to think about that tonight. Fifteen years God's allowed this to ripen in the place. Now, and I thought about it, and, and I don't, I don't like, you see, I don't like it. I said, Thursday night, but I, when I, when I really, I struggled with what God had given me. And, because I don't, I said, I don't like to go and say, thus saith the Lord, unless I know thus saith the Lord. I don't want, I, see, I don't want really, I don't want to say things that aren't so when it, when it comes to, 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 to speaking the, the Lord's word. But I'll tell you tonight, we, just as Jeremiah didn't, he didn't, didn't take that moment and say, God's going to do something. Just as Paul didn't really, God, God thought he was, Paul thought he was doing something for God. But, he, but that moment, he, he didn't think there was going to be a change in now listen, we're here tonight and there are things that we need. There are things that there are things that we need to, to get rid of or we need God to remove in our life. There are things that we need to receive in our life to equip us and to empower us to carry out that which God has purposed us. Understand this. Everybody look at me right now. If you're a born again Christian, God has purposed you. If, you, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is a purpose in your life, and that purpose is to spread the gospel to those around you. Get that in your, mind, in your head and in your heart. Understand that. And so my point is this. Just as Jeremiah didn't take that moment and say, God's about to do something. Just as Paul didn't take Paul, Paul was trying to do something for God, you know. But he didn't take he at that moment and say, God's about to change my life. And understand, he was radically changed. Jeremiah was radically changed. Paul was radically changed. Every, every, you know, every instant that you talked about. So at that moment, listen, when you were when you were driving down that road at 16 years old, at that moment, did you say, you know, God's about to show me something so incredible and he's not going to let me speak about it for 50 years at the right moment with the right people at the right time to, for it to have the right uh, uh, actions or, or the right consequences in the lives of those here. Did you, were you thinking that? You were just driving down the road, wasn't you? Had some girl in your mind? What? Thinking about what you put. <laughs> when you were, when you went to bed that night, when your sister lost her life in an accident, you, and God, and, 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 and that, that, that rubber, I mean, you heard her voice and she going to do something in my life that's going to change me tonight. Did you, did you? No. No. You simply, you simply were just there and God chose that moment. I'm going to tell you something tonight. God spoke to me and I, I don't, as I said, if, if, this, doesn't, if this doesn't come to pass, you can, you can, you can, you can call. we've been talking about prophecies and prophets and things. But, so if this doesn't happen, guess what? I missed it, okay? But I feel so confident when God told me Listen, you're here for a reason and a purpose. 
And there are things in our life that sometimes it takes us a long time to change. There are things in our life it takes us a long time to get rid of. But the words that he spoke tonight, they really, in, in, in context, we wanted to look at those, that, at that word of, in the blink of an eye. You know what you said? I think how you described it in the blink of an eye. That, that these things happen. But understand this. Right here, God has given us a word. He's given you a word. He's given me a word that will change our life in the blink of an eye. You see, those things that we've been struggling to get rid of for so long, days, months, years, or whatever, right here, right now, God said, this is the time I gave you the word to understand in the blink of an eye, everything, everything can change, but you don't have to look at that as a negative thing. You see, we always look at it. Here's what we do. We say, things, things can happen to change in the blink of an eye. What are we always talking about? Negative things. So he said tonight, I'm not a negative God, I'm a positive God. And what's happened in your life is you receive something that will cause your life to be fulfilled and restored and renewed in the blink of an eye. If you receive it tonight, those things that you struggle with, those things that you're wrestling with, in the blink of an eye, go on, just accept him. Now here's where, here's where it got interesting. I began, and I got kind of concerned, I'm going to give you the back story. We read a tent revival. And to, without getting into the to all of the, the, the you know the ins and outs and the, the details of the electronics of this equipment, there was a switch that actually I guess was going down the road in the trailer and on one of these speakers it bounced down and it and it made and it made a, a, a contact that it should not make because this they're, they're, the way the speakers are made they can be worked in different ways. Okay? So we're sitting out there, we're testing everything, and all of a sudden somebody starts screaming, that speaker's on fire. We looked out there and it was like, oh, we're going to have to call the fire department. So we finally got everything cut off and we got the switch. I figured, you know, we fortunately got the red light to it out, get it back on. And so it's worked. It did burn one of one of it did burn some capacitors and things out, but it still works. One 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 more doesn't work anyway. That's the over there. I'm looking up here and all of a sudden I said, oh no. Uh, and it was just so, so, it, it was so smoky and I was like, wow. And I, mean, I, was, and I kept looking, I was looking at the, and I, and I realized and, uh, it's not, it's not, it's not smoke from the speaker. I, you know, it's just everything just began to get, to get hazy. And then God began to speak to my heart and he said this, this people, everybody that's here tonight is here for this time in this season, 50 years waiting to release this this word on somebody, and you are, you are, we, we're those that small group. And now here's what he spoke to me. He said, you tell everybody this. This right here is the last time you're going to see revived youth services in Bend County like this. That's it. That's the last time. He said, from this point forward, those who receive, that will receive, will go out. And because of that, it's been given to them tonight. This place will be full next, day, the last Saturday in next month, and will continue to grow, continue to minister. And God wants to use us in that capacity. And I'm not telling you to go out and tell everybody. I'm just telling you what He said. He said, "This is the last time you're going to see these empty seats in here. This is the last time you're going to open the doors and wonder if there's going to be five or there's going to be." Because from this point forward, God says, going to pour out. He unleashed something tonight. He called. When he called Jeremiah, it changed his life. But I'm going to tell you this. Here's the interesting part that he showed me. Because it changed Jeremiah's life, you and I are where we are today. So it not only changed Jeremiah's life, but it changed the lives of those who followed behind him. And that's what, that's what we saw here tonight. I've never been in his I, I don't know that I've ever been in But God put something out here that we need to grab. So tonight, I want us to, to, to take what He has given us. 
whatever it is, whatever you're dealing with, this is the moment, this is the time, this is God, this is this is the time as God was calling out to Jeremiah, he's calling out to us tonight. And we have to answer. We have to answer. So I'm gonna leave it at that. We can have we can we can uh, uh, you know, we can interpret that however. Speaking to me tonight, thank you for calling me, and I, I, I want what you have for me. I want this, I, I, I believe this word, I believe it's 100% truth, and I just want that to be revealed through me in my life. I want all these things that I deal with every day. Listen to me, I'm not a good pastor for 20 years, I still deal with stuff. Still deal with issues. Satan still works his way into that space in my life where God has prepared for me. He's, that there's still at times a snake in my garden. You understand? That he comes in and he tries to deceive and he tries to. I'm rid of all that. You just know you have no place in my life. God has spoken to me tonight, and I know this one thing. I don't have to just look for things, bad things to happen instantly. But I know that God is going to change things for good in the blink of an eye in my life right here today. Every single one of us. So that, I don't know, it's going to take a minute to just continue to worship for a second. Listen, those hot dogs back there, they'll be there when we get finished. They're not going anywhere. We poisoned all the rats. They're gone. <laughs>